Hi, this is Keith Bradbury of Mojo Mouthpiece Work. This is a unscripted video just so that I can get something done on presenting this other spreadsheet that I use a lot. First of all, um, let me show you Stephen Fox's web site and the resources he has. There's a when you go there to sfoxclarinets.com, click on articles and research projects, click on mathemal, practical mathematics, then down at the bottom, there's of this list is mathematical modeling, and then you can scroll down or actually it takes you down to the section where he talks about mathematical modeling of mouthpiece facing curves. And it presents a fairly simple formula right here that is the power uh, curve for mouthpiece facing. It's different from the radial curve and the elliptical curve in that on a mouthpiece it starts out with a uh, you know, flat, and then there's a curve in, in like, under the heart of the reed, and then it flattens out towards the tip, whereas el elliptical curve does it the other way around. It's more or less curved here and then gets flatter towards the facing length, and the radial is just an arc of a curve. So this curve fits, in my opinion, about half of the clarinet mouthpieces out there. So I created, uh, the way I came up with that uh, uh, revelation was I had created a um, spreadsheet that I call Combo Fit. And in it, it has a column where I take the data and I fit it to both a power fit and an elliptical fit and see which one fits better. Uh, in this spreadsheet that I'm going to share, um, there's tabs and I have the Combo Blank uh, the power curve blank and an elliptical blank, which is just one of each one by themselves and how it's coded in there. But here's how the combo blank works, which uh, fits them both. Um, you, this particular uh, set of data I took off of this Charles Bay uh, bass clarinet mouthpiece that I recently repaired. It had a, uh, a crack on the tenon and almost a big chunk was barely hanging on, and I managed to fill it, and uh, I wrapped some wire around it, uh, and epoxied that in place, and then put cork over it. So that's repaired, but it got me thinking about this. But anyhow, the, um, the data I took off of the facing um, is listed here, and I'll, I'll label this. Um, let me rename this. I'll share this data. Bay... Uh, M, I think it's an M plus dash O M. Yeah, that's what I put here. Um, M O plus M. Whatever, it's engraved on there. Um, and the, the, the facing uh, tip opening is 0 0.08, which is 2.03 millimeters tip rail with... 28, and here's the left and right data. And yeah, I've got some remnants of stuff here that I'll delete. Anyhow, so that's my starting data that I typed in, and that gets copied down into the working part of the spreadsheet. Um, and just if you haven't seen my elliptical spreadsheet, I encourage you to find that, find the video I have on that and the link to it. Um, because I'm not going to go over a lot of the stuff that's on there. I'm just going to assume you know that and then show you how to use this. So essentially, the, the three columns here that are labeled ELL are identical to that spreadsheet. And here I have three new columns, which are the power uh, fit, which is the, um, the curve fit. This is the power curve that's coded in there. And then the difference between... Um, the uh, average of these two readings and the calculated reading is a difference, different squared, and that creates an error function. And then the combo error function is the error function of both the power fit and the ellipse added together. And the idea is you want to minimize that 
error function to try to get both curves fit simultaneously. So, uh, let's see, this data I have to make sure is pointing at the right thing. Chart design, select data, yeah, it is pointing at the right thing, okay. So, right here, this blue line is the data being plotted, and it's a little crooked. There's some da dashed lines in there to show you some crookedness. Uh, I may have, um, I may, in my own personal spreadsheet, have deleted those uh, columns or turned them off because they kind of get in the way of uh, seeing the graph when you've got this many, uh, you know, multiple curves showing. But for now, I'll leave them in there. Um, so, ready for the curve fit. What I do, uh, you have to have the solver added into your spreadsheet. And I talk about this at length uh, in the other video. So you go to Data, Solver, and it comes up. You want to minimize, and I didn't point to the right cell yet. Well, you know, take your uh, objective cell, cell is here, this one, the sum difference of both. And you want to minimize that value by changing these six values. Three of the values up top are for the power fit. The three at the bottom are for the elliptical fit. The power fit has, the main thing you want to be current, concerned with is this P, the exponent. Um, and then you solve, okay? Okay, so it just solved them both. All these numbers changed to make this number as small as it could, given the data that we have. So looking at this plot again, there's two curve fits. There's a magenta line, which is the curve fit for one, and a purple line, which is the curve fit for the other, and all kind of on top of each other. So it's difficult to, to visually see which fit is better. But if you look at these um, two columns here, the power fit number is 4.9, and the elliptical is 9.5. So this one says that the power fit is a little bit better of a fit to the data than the elliptical. Um, as a reface here, you could probably use either one as a target curve. And some sometimes they're nearly identical, uh, especially when the, uh, the, uh, the exponent comes close to two, I believe. When it's near two, the ellipse and the power function will usually lie on top of each other. So um, there it is. Um, And, you know, you could use, you know, to, to smooth out the irregularities, you can either use the power fit um, goal as, as a target or the elliptical fit goal as a target. But you can see they give you slightly different numbers. Either one's a nice smooth curve compared to maybe the irregularities of the uh, fitted data. Um, and sometimes I work off the this spreadsheet and just pick one and go at it. And sometimes I'll go to the either the power uh, curve uh, dedicated sheet or the elliptical curve dedicated sheet and work off of that because it's just you know fewer columns to uh, it looks like less confusing. Let's say so. Um, I guess that's all I'm going to tell you about this. Everything else is kind of similar in, in, in work uh, to the other video. I just wanted to share this spreadsheet and uh, get it out there.